All right, guys, today we're going to talk about my Emerson collection, going over the Emersons, all the Emersons I have in my knife collection. And without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. All right, so first one off that we're going to start with is kind of an Emerson. This is technically a collaboration, so some of you might not actually call this an Emerson, but I think a lot of people, it's reasonably safe to say, would call this uh, an Emerson enough because it is, like I said, by definition, a literal Emerson design. So anyways, this is the Kershaw CQC6, and this one in particular is in D2, and this guy is overall pretty darn cool. And I really am kind of conflicted about these Kershaw and ZT knives because they are like what I want an Emerson to be. They have that more traditional flat grind with a proper bevel on both sides. They're not chisel ground and overall they're pretty good. About the only thing I really dislike about both the Emerson and ZT collab, or sorry Emerson, um, Kershaw and ZT collabs with Emerson is that they're frame locks because I honestly really do like liner locks. Like I can see why this is a frame lock. Like frame locks are very popular. They're very in, they're very trendy, they're very cool. But at the same time too, I am not honestly the biggest fan of frame locks. I think they're kind of overdone. So in addition to that too, I think they're kind of sucky because for me, like this is a steel frame lock, not a titanium frame lock, which means that this guy is pretty hefty. Like uh, for the size of this knife, it is certainly heavier than most others. So anyways, that is the Emerson Kershaw collaboration CQC6 in D2. All right, next one up is going to be another mini or smaller, and that is the Emerson Horseman. And the Horseman is the mini CQC8. This guy is, once again, pretty cool. Now, this is a legit um, Emerson. Now, this one has seen some use and abuse, but as most good Emersons are, this guy is still good, solid lockup, nothing really wrong with it. I'd say about the only thing is the tip has kind of been rounded out by poor sharpening, but uh, yeah, only so much you can do about that. But honestly, not really that disappointed. It's a fairly older model. This one's a 2013, but yeah, just very well broken in overall solid Emerson knife. So that is the Mini CQC8 or the Horseman. It's also worth noting too, this guy has a brass thumb disc up here. This is what used to be a 7.62x39, so the AK bullet, so to speak. Someone chopped off the back of that and made it into a thumb disc, which is a fairly popular thing to do with Emersons and I'm honestly not that opposed to it. I think it's kind of cool. It's a nice touch. It's a way to make your knives a little bit more unique. And for me, I'm kind of mixed about it because I like the uniqueness, but at the same time too, the brass end of a bullet is uh, rather slick uh, for use as a thumb disc. So on all of my other Emersons, I have just a traditional thumb disc because it's super grippy. And if you put your thumb there, you are bound to grab that thumb disc. So for me, it's a little bit of a mixture, but I do like that one because it has some personality to it. All right, next one up is going to be probably one of the oldest knives in my collection. Um, and it's not necessarily the one I've had the longest, but this is just literally, as far as age goes, the long, oldest knife in my collection. And this one was made in 2009. This is an Emerson Minicom. And the Minicom is probably my all-time favorite design from Emerson, like, of all time. And I really, really like the Minicom, primarily because, if you guys know me, I am a big sucker for really exaggerated recurved blades I just absolutely love there's this kind of like kookery-esque look to the uh, commander like as a whole but the minicom is just like a super pocketable version of the commander series so there's even things like the super commander that are above average size it's kind of like an XL version of the commander but I love the minicom because it's just so pocket friendly so overall the Minicom is probably my favorite Emerson, but it is just really cool. All right, and rounding off my collection of Emersons is going to be the Emerson Ensar. This one probably, like, as far as collection goes, 
This one's probably my favorite because this is an Emerson that people on the YouTubes, on the Instagrams, there are a lot of Emersons floating out there in the wild, right? And a lot of people have so many different limited edition, kind of special, unobtainable models. And this is kind of my version of that because the NSAR, while albeit not really like super, super, you know, unfindable like you can find these guys you can track them down but because they're so mission specific like they are a genuine rescue knife they are a knife that a lot of people don't own so a lot of people will tell me you know like oh i have this rare emerson or that you know rare emerson and i'm like well and i'm just like well i have the ensar and so this is kind of my answer to the rare or unobtainable emerson debate and so once again this is the ensar which stands for navy search and rescue this is a um kind of modified design off of emerson's original s-a-r-k or sark or search and rescue knife. Now, both the Sark and the Ensar were designed originally for Navy um, divers to be a, a safety knife if people, you know, were drowning or they needed to be extracted from, you know, whatever type of gear, if they were caught in webbing, whatever. Um, the Ensar and the Sark were designed to help get people out of a bind. So that is why this one has a predominant strap cutter, seat belt cutter, webbing cutter. You can just stick that right into things and it will slice. I really do love how sharp this webbing cutter is too, or strap cutter, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, it works very well. In addition to, it is nice to have a very well recurved blade and a nice set of serrations at the bottom here for cutting. Now, once again, just like every true Emerson, this is a chisel ground knife. So take that for what it is, but it is still very sharp where it's supposed to be. Obviously this does have a blunt tip, so you're not gonna cut yourself at all on this tip. In addition to, you guys have probably noticed, I also keep Ranger Pace Beads as a lanyard for all of my um, Emersons. And that's just something that I personally do. There isn't any, I mean, there is function in Ranger Pace Beads, but I really think that Ranger Pace Beads just fit the aesthetic of these Emersons because all of my Emersons especially are very militaristic, very tactical, very, you know, military inspired. So I think having those Ranger Pace Beads on there, it's just kind of a nice compliment in addition to it's nice because it's a nice and long lanyard so you can easily track down your knife some people might say it's a little excessive and i'm kind of leaning towards that but at the same time too i like it it's just for me it's what i do with my emersons it's kind of a unique touch that um, it started with my original two emersons when i bought them they came with uh, ranger pay speeds on there and so i was like you know what i'm just gonna rock it so that's exactly what i did so that has been a look at all of my Emersons. Like I said, I only have four in the collection. And as far as future collecting for Emersons, I might collect more Emersons in the future. To be honest, it was never really my intention to get so many uh, Emersons because I did want one Emerson like for my collection because Emerson has been a long time brand in the EDC community. They're kind of like Strider, you know, they're known for their rough around the edges approach. But at the same time too, I kind of ended up collecting more because one, well, when I originally got my first Emerson, it was kind of a package deal. So a guy gave me a really good price on both of the Emersons. So he was like, you can get by this Emerson for this price or these two Emersons for this price. And I was like, well, that's a really good deal. So I'm not going to say no. So I ended up getting two Emersons and then I kind of added the Kershaw and the Ensar because especially the Ensar was a knife that, um, was one very applicable to my lifestyle and what I do. And it was also a really cool knife because they're pretty darn rare to find out in the wild. So anyways, that is that guy and that is my Emerson collection as a whole. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.